Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? The Mac PowerBook 1400 was a popular model during its time in the late 90s and remains a solid option for those into retro computing. There's an annoying and common problem with it though, and this time we'll look at a simple fix. Due to brittle plastic, the bezel on the 1400 CD-ROM drive module has the tendency to break off. It's held on with just a couple of small tabs, so this probably comes at no surprise. I wondered if I could make new ones, so I set out to try exactly that. I removed what was left of the old tabs using a pair of flush cutters. Once I got it trimmed down as much as I could, I switched over to sandpaper to get the surface as flat as possible. The tab on the left side is a little trickier, as it's surrounded by this foil shielding, which I bent out of the way. The tab is right next to the clear Activity LED window, so after snipping it off, I put a piece of Kapton tape over the window to keep from scratching it up. Then the sandpaper came out again to clean up the plastic bits that remained. I took careful measurements from another bezel that wasn't as broken and designed replacement parts using CAD. I included bases for them to allow for a decent amount of surface area for glue, which should hopefully translate into a strong bond with the bezel. Then I could 3D print a couple pairs of them using PLA. They're small and not overly intricate, so it just took a few minutes. The material color doesn't really matter, since they won't be seen when installed. Comparing the new bracket to an original one, I think I got pretty close. I used some CA glue designed for plastics to bond the brackets to the bezel. I'm often asked why I don't add baking soda when I glue parts together, and the reason is that doing so makes the glue thicker and can affect the fit between them. Getting everything lined up right comes down to fractions of a millimeter, so I designed the brackets to align against other parts of the bezel to make gluing them in easier. The right bracket simply presses into this corner, and the notch in the base should clear the hole for the manual eject button. The left bracket is a little trickier. It should line up with the end of the ridge. This will become a big factor in a little bit. Both brackets, of course, account for the angle of the bezel, which took me a little while to figure out. With its new brackets, the bezel fit onto the drive module without a problem, and I could get its screws reinstalled. But when I went to slide the drive into its bay, I ran across an issue. It couldn't slide in all the way because the bezel was slightly misaligned. Compared to a good drive on the right, the bezel was sticking up a bit higher than it should, showing just how tight the tolerances are. Since the glue hadn't fully cured, I popped the brackets off the bezel and instead installed a fresh pair to the drive module first. Then, with the drive already in the PowerBook, I applied some glue and set the bezel into place. This made sure it got aligned properly, and it's the method I'd recommend following. And that did the trick. The bezel got firmly glued to the new brackets and looks like new. While I still plan on handling it carefully, it's been holding up to the rigors of normal use just fine. I think using 3D printing to make replacement parts for retro machines like this is going to become increasingly common going forward, especially for dealing with brittle or broken plastics. I have, of course, made the design files for these brackets available for download if you want to print your own. Be sure to check the description for more information. I've also included a model I made a while ago for a PowerBook 500 series dummy battery, since many of the original ones have started leaking and been disposed of. The dummy battery can either simply hold the outside cover on for cosmetic reasons, or you could modify the design to build a replacement pack out of. If you do something cool with it, let me know. I'd be curious to see how it turned out. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.